Hello and welcome to the Tay Math News. I'm your host, DJ Tay, whoop, whoop, and I am here bringing you the study guide for Unit 4, Part A. Okay, so as usual, put your name, date, and class period at the top. I am going to represent class period number two because they did so amazingly on our quiz yesterday. Okay. So let's look at number one. It says solve for x. 3.5x equals 70. So the first step, I'm going to circle my variable. I'm going to, what is being done to this variable? It's being multiplied by 3.5. So the inverse of that will be to divide each side by 3.5. Okay, so these 3.5s, they cancel out leaving me just with x on that side okay so now i need to pop into a calculator 70 divided by 3.5 and when i do that on my calculator i get 20. x is 20 but now we're going to check it 3.5 x equals 70 was our original equation now i'm going to substitute in my 20 for the x and solve to see. So I'm putting in calculator 3.5 times 20 and I get 70. 70 does indeed equal 70. So my answer of x equals 20 was correct. All right, so now it's time for number two, y minus 24 equals 72 and it wants us to solve for y, solve for y. So I'm gonna circle my variable ask what's being done to it, it's being subtracted by 24, and the inverse of subtracting 24 is to add 24 on both sides. So those 24s cancel out, and now I have only y left over here, and y equals 96. So I'm going to check my work, y minus 24, equals 72 is my original equation. Now I'm gonna substitute in my 96 for y. And pop it to my calculator, 96 minus 24, that gives me 72. So I'm saying 72 equals 72. That is indeed a balanced equation, so 96 is my y. Number three. Sean went to the concession stand at a football game and bought two hot dogs for H dollars each and a soda for S dollars. Sean paid for his food with a $50 bill. Write an expression for how much change he should receive. So there are a couple things that are important here. So for one, the two hot dogs for H dollars, the soda for S dollars, but notice it says a soda. So we're talking about one soda. So we're talking about one S. And then for two hot dogs for H dollars, we're talking about two H. Now, they ask us to write an expression. So we're not gonna have an equal sign here. They just want us to write an expression that we could have used to solve. So we know he had $50 that he paid for and he paid for his purchase, which as we see is two hot dogs, so two H, plus the one soda. Now, remember that invisible one, we don't have to put one in our equations, we just write an S for algebra. So that is the expression, 50 minus, in parentheses, two H plus S. Number four, a rectangular lawn has a length of 4x feet and a width of 7x minus 9 feet. Write the expression that represents the area of this rectangle. So we know that area of rectangles equals length times the width. So that means I'm taking my length of 4x and I'm going to multiply that by my width of 7x minus 9. So length of 4x times my width of 7x minus 9. And they just wanted an expression that represented. So we're not going to simplify it. There's our expression. 
Number five, John's Lawn Service charges a one-time fee of $18 in addition to two, $10 excuse me, per hour worked. Write an expression all right, that represents how much money John would charge if he worked in hours. So that's the variable we're going to use. Now, here's the thing. That N is representing the hours worked. And look what it says up here, $10 per hour work. So that means I know right off the top, I have 10 in, $10 times the amount of hours. But then we have the one time fee of $18. So once we calculate that 10 in, we then have to add the $18. And boom, that's my expression. All right, so for number six, number six might have thrown you for a bit of a loop especially if you did not remember how to solve, how to add and subtract your fractions with different denominators. So this might be a big review for you. Um, so I want you to pay careful attention to what I do. There are a lot of steps. So the first thing, we're gonna approach this like a one-step equation. We circle our variable. We ask what's being done to it and I see that it's being added to two, uh, two thirds is being added to it. So the inverse of that is to subtract two thirds on both sides of the equal sign. So these two thirds here, they cancel out, leaving us with just X on this side. But now I see that I have different denominators, so I need to go ahead and set this up to have them have the same denominator so that I can solve. So I'm gonna set my equal sign up for both of these because I'm gonna to get to a common denominator. So I'm asking myself, I have three and I have five. What is the least common multiple? That means when I multiply both of these numbers out, what number do they get to, the, do they share first? So let's see, three, six, nine, 12, 15. Hey, five could go into 15. So I'm gonna put my 15 down here. And I have to make sure that these fractions are equivalent. So how am I going from three to 15? I'm multiplying by five. So I must also multiply by five up here. So two times five is 10. And then with this fraction, how am I going from five to 15? I am multiplying by three, so I must also multiply the numerator by three. Four times three is 12. So now I have 12 over 15 minus my 10 over 15. So I know my denominator is gonna stay the same of 15, but 12 minus 10 is two. So I have an answer of X equals two over 15, okay? But now it's time to check that. And this is where it gets a little tricky. So you have to pay close attention to what I do here. All right, so I have X, my original equation is X plus two thirds is equal to 12 over 15. And now I'm substituting my X for two over 15. Ah, so now instead of subtracting with different denominators, now we have to add two fractions with different denominators, okay? So I'm going to set up my problem over here. I have my, I'm adding two over 15 to my two over three. And I need to get them both to have a denominator of 15. So when I go from 15 to 15, I only multiply by one. So two times one is two. Down here to go from three to 15, I had to multiply by five. Two times five is 10. So now, I have two over 15 plus 10 over 15. 
my denominator stay the same of 15 and 2 plus 10 is 12. Whew. So I'm back to 12 over 15. So my answer 2 over 15 for X is correct. Whew, that was a lot of work. All right, number seven, over summer break, Spin Master Traster and four of her friends started a pet sitting business. The first month, they earned $856. If they divide the money equally, how much would each person earn? All right, so dividing tells me I'm going to divide and in equally. So that means I need to make sure I know how many people I'm going to divide that money up into. So Spin Master Traster is one plus the four for friends, total of five people. So this is simply $856 divided by five. I'm going to pop that into the calculator and I get 171.20. So it's $171.20 each. Not bad. Okay, number eight. Ashley charges $10 for each hour, H, she babysits. Last week, the total amount she earned by babysitting was $70. Write an equation, an equation this time, that could be used to find the number of hours, at, hours Ashley babysat last week. So now we have an equation, so we will have an equal sign. So it tells us some key information here. $10 for each hour, H. So that will be 10H. $10 times the number of hours she babysits. And it's saying that when she did that, she made $70. So here's our expression, excuse me, our equation. 10H equals $70. Okay, let's turn it to the back. Let's look at number nine. The Glee Club is having a fundraiser selling novelty cups. Their goal is to make a profit of $1,200. If they receive $2.40 profit for each cup, see how many cups do they need to sell to make a profit of $1,200? They want us to write an equation. So we're going to have an equal sign, guys. Write an equation that can be used to find C the number of cups the Glee Club needs to sell. So they're not asking us to solve anything. They just want us to write the equation. So let's look here. All right, so their goal is to make a profit of $1,200. So that tells me that's the total. $1,200 is the total. Okay, but how am I gonna get to that total? It says that they receive $2.40 for each cup C. That means it's $2.40 times C. So if I order two cups, it's $4.80. If I order three cups, you see what I'm saying? So it's $2.40 C equals $1,200. That is our equation. Let's look at number 10. What is the value of X in the equation? 22X equals 99. We have a one-step equation here. So I am going to circle my variable of X. I'm asking myself what's being done to it, and it's being multiplied by 22. The inverse of multiplying by 22 is to divide each side by 22. And these 22s cancel out, leaving me just with X. And I'm going to pop into the calculator, 99 divided by 22. And when I do so, I get 4.5. So now it's time for my, me to check my work. So I'll write my original equation, 22x equals 99. I am going to substitute in my 4.5 for my x. I'm going to pop this in, in the calculator, 22 times 4.5. And I am getting 99. So I'm saying that 99 equals 99. Yes, indeed. So my X equaling 4.5 was correct. Number 11. Given the equation X plus 8 equals 77, DJ Tay found that X equals 85. Did DJ Tay make an error when solving the equation? 
If so, what is the error? All right, so I don't make errors a lot, but hmm, I am pretty sure I did make an error here. Let's check it out. So the first thing to do whenever you're doing error analysis is to solve the problem yourself. So x plus 8 equals 77. This is a one-step equation. So I'm circling my variable. I see that it's being 8 is being added to it. So the inverse is to subtract 8. And I'm going to do that on both sides. These 8s cancel out. So now I'm just left with x on this side. And I'm going to pop into my calculator, 77 minus 8. And I get 69. Hmm. And just to check it, I'm going to plug in 69 here. 69 plus 8. Yeah, it does equal 77. But she got 85. How did she get 85? Well, you know what I think she did? I think instead of, so for one, the answer is yes. DJ Tay made an error. And if so, what error? I see that instead of subtracting, 8 from 77, DJ Tay added 8 to 77 instead of subtracting 8 to find that x equals 69. That was her error. It happens, guys. All right, number 12. Which equation is true when n equals 12? All right, so they give us four different equations here. And the best thing to do is to substitute in and solve and see if these are equivalent. So I have 3n. Remember, our n is going to equal 12. So I'm substituting in my 12. And 3 times 12 is 36. 36 and 4, that's not balanced. They do not equal each other. They are not equivalent. So I know it's not A. Let's go to our next one, 20 minus N. So I'm going to pop in my 12 for my N. Solve this side. 20 minus 12 is 8. 8 does not equal 32. So B is not it either. Let's look at the next one. Substitute my 12 for that N. And over here, 12 plus 5, that equals 17. 17 does not equal 7. So we're pretty much down to the last one, right? But I want to make sure that we have any of them that are true. I'm still going to go ahead and substitute my 12 in. And it's being divided by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Saying that 6 equals 6. Yes, indeed it does. So, n divided by 2 equals 6 is my equation. That's true when n equals 12. All right, number 13 from the set. 86, 67, and 29, which value of x makes the equation true? Which value of x makes the equation true? So what we can do here is we look at each of these and we plug it in and see if it makes sense, see if it's true. So let's try the first one is 86. So I'm going to plug in my 86 minus 19 is equal to 48. And I am going to pop that into the calculator. 86 minus 19 is 67. And 67 does not equal 48. So 86 can't be it. Let's look at the next one. I'm going to use 67 for x. 67 minus 19. And I'm going to pop this 67 minus 19 into the calculator, and I get 48. And 48 does indeed equal 48. So my 67, x is equal to 67 here. 
All right, number 14, what value of x makes the equation true and why? All right, so we have another one-step equation. I'm going to circle my variable of x. What is being done to x is being divided by 8. So that means I need to multiply both sides by 8. And these 8s down here cancel out, leaving me just with x equals, and 4 times 8 is 32. So I have the x equals 32, okay? But now I'm going to check it. I'm going to plug in my x of 32 over in the equation it was 8, and it said that it was equal to 4. Let's see, 32 divided by 8 is 4. 4 does indeed equal 4, so my x equals 32 is correct. All right, let's look at number 15, our last one, guys. From the set 118, 282, 158, which value of x makes the equation true? And we have the equation 62 plus x equals 220. So again, we are going to substitute in each one of these numbers to see which one is correct. So I have 62 plus, and I'm going to use the first one, the x of 118. All right, and I am going to put that, it said it's supposed to equal 220. So let's do the math, 62 plus 118. Um, according to my calculator, that's 180. All right, and 180 does not equal 220. So 118 is not it. All right, so now the second one, let's do our, uh, we have 62 plus our x. We are going to try our 282 in for x. And it's supposed to equal 220. I'm going to pop this into the calculator, 62 plus 228. And my calculator says that equals 344. And 344 does not equal 220. So 282 is not our x. So we're down to 158, but I want to make sure and check my math anyway. So we have 62 plus 158, and it's supposed to be equal to 220. So I'm going to pop into the calculator my 62 plus 158. And what do you know? I get 220. And 220 does equal 220. So my x equals 158. All right, guys. So I think that you are definitely ready for this. If I hope that you have been checking your work, going over this, if you need to watch this video again, definitely do so because it's going to help you understand how to approach each and every problem on the test. Remember that my study guides are made from the test. So if you have a pretty good grasp on what this study guide had on it, you will be super ready for our test. Have a great day and thank you for joining me for Tay Math News.